Hey guys, Tony here from Bikeberry. Guess what we're going to talk about today? Chain alignment. This is something that's been brought up a lot and I haven't seen too much covered on it specifically in one video. So I just got the switch screws together with the rear wheel, the engine mounted on it, and then also the chain tensioner. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to see what causes your chain to get misaligned. Let's roll. So let's start at the rear wheel. Remember a couple videos back, we mounted this sprocket adapter and this sprocket? Well, I put a keyway in there so that it won't slip. So go back if you haven't seen that video and watch it, please. It'll really help you out. Now, as far as how much misalignment you can actually have with this, it ain't much, especially with one with the rear brake on it, right? If you are up against, trying to stick the camera in here as much as I can, if you're up against these spokes, which I'm not touching, I'm a little bit away, and then I am just a little bit away for this because you gotta have the brake arm miss these heads, right, of these bolts. So I'm in the pretty much the only place without modifying the brake arm much more, the only place that this can go, which, is in line with the engine okay so as we move up let's look at the next part that could be in our way if we look at the arch chain tensioner that i just put on here the frame is at an angle which makes our little wheel at an angle so we're going to have to find a solution to straighten that out then the next thing in our path is the rear fender so now most people we highly recommend getting rid of the rear fender but we know some of you, you're gonna to wanna to keep the rear fender. So I'm gonna show you how to make it safer. So what we'll do is we're gonna cut out a section of the rear fender so it won't intrude with your chain's travel. Now let's get up to the engine here. The engine is pretty much mounts where it mounts, right? There's not much you can do to put it side to side without major modifications. So we have this point of mounting is pretty much what it is. And then we have this point of mounting, which is pretty much what it is, which is a straight line. The only two things that are hanging up here is our adjustment pulley wheel and rear fender. So we have two things that are in the pathway of our chain. Our chain tensioner wheel is out of alignment a little bit because of the angle of the frame. And then also our rear fender needs to be cut out to allow the chain to pass by it. Then we won't have anything in, intruding in the path, okay? Now, if you are somebody who puts the chain guards on like this, that's something that you'll have to, have to think about, you know, which is something that I'll get to later when we get the rest of the bike assembled. But right now, I wanted to get basic functionality taken care of. So first things first, we're gonna take and cut out a section of the rear fender so the chain can pass through effortlessly. I like to use pieces of a tape measure that I cut off into 12 inch strips as a measuring tool. So what I do is go in there and measure to the tire just exactly how much it's sticking over the tire in our way. This looks like about 3 eighths of an inch. So if we go there, it's about three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go half inch minimum. I'm gonna give it the extra clearance, okay? So that gives us an idea. And remember, this is curved, so you kinda of gotta give that extra. So we'll take our tape measure, and we'll put it right on the edge of that, and we'll mark just like that. Get a little mark, and I tend to do it just like this. I put my finger, this finger, against the edge and then mark up and down. That kind of gives me a good starting point to where I can start mapping out the rest of it. So I want, because of chain slap and all this, and these chains uh, stretch when you first start using them, go like inch and a half. Above and inch and a half below. Okay, just like that. 
So that's a roughed in idea of where we're gonna cut out the fender. Now I like to do things nice. So I'm gonna angle this like that. I'm gonna do this one, angle it like that. There. Gives us an idea of where we're gonna cut it out at. Now we take our snips and we go in at that angle. And here you can see I'm using the red handle ones. Those are left cutting. So I took the chain off to finish the job here. Now you can see that I used a uh, tin snips because tin snips and I go way back. You can use a cutoff wheel on a Dremel or an angle grinder or something like that. But to be honest, tin snips just do the job for me. So what I'll do after I'm sure that the chain path is clear and everything is working well, I'll remove the fender and I'll make sure that all the you know burrs and sharp edges are knocked down on my sander. So you can do the same. Now that that's clear, let's put our chain back on. Alright, so if we look from above, it's pretty straight. Looks pretty good. So overall, it looks really good and straight. Everything lines up really well. Next culprit that we have to deal with is this wheel. And I'm going to show you a fix that I have in mind to make this correct. Now this is something that we're going to work on because there's multiple fixes. So this is going to depend on what tools you have, what uh, skill level you're at, that kind of thing. But my first thought is taking this bolt and bending it just a little bit to make the chain lay straight. So because of the frame is angled, this chain tensioner wheel is angled a little bit. It's not that much on this particular frame. So we have a few options. One is you bend the bolt a little bit to make that straight. Two is add some sort of shim in here and here to level the entire thing out. Three is like next step. <laughs> and this is a beast. This is like three eighths thick or so, uh, is actually mounting it in a vise and reshaping this unit level. So it's angled at the points of contact, but level in the center. So you're gonna put it in the vise and you're actually gonna bend it out. Today, what I'm gonna do is just show you um, bending the bolt a little bit, mounting it in there, and that's the first test that I'm gonna try. And then I'll come back with the video on how that test worked out. Up to this point, I've made my own, because I'm a fabricator type, I've made my own, and I was able to compensate for these things. So, but when you're someone who's just buying pieces and parts and trying to assemble this stuff, because uh, you gotta remember, none of this stuff is plug and play. <laughs> you're mounting, things that mount on could mount on any bicycle and all of those bikes bicycles are so different that you have to compensate for those variables okay so in this case i'm having to compensate for the variables and the variable is the frame is angled this is flat and we have to make it not angled on an angled frame <laughs> right so what we're going to do today is bend the bolt and that'll be our starting point so let's start by taking our little wheel off and seeing just how we're going to modify this bolt. This is a good time to show that, you know, why you don't want to start putting lock nuts and all that stuff on your hardware yet, because you're trying to figure a lot of this stuff out. Okay. So anyway, we're going to remove this nut here because that's where our bend needs to start at. So we got some figuring out to do. So if you remember, we ground down the sides of our bolt. Let's see if you can see it there, there, and there to fit in the arch chain tensioner because the tolerances are tight sometimes in those. So what we're gonna do is instead of marking on here, cause marks just come off, what we're gonna do is use our tape measure and we're going to measure, it looks like, I'll just hold it towards you. We're gonna measure from the bolt head, see bolt head, is flush with this down. It looks like an inch and an eighth or so 
to where this bolt lands. We'll pull it apart and then we'll mount it in the vise and we'll give it a little bend. So what I've done is I've threaded a nut back onto the bolt and the inch and an eighth range. It'll be pretty good. We'll put it in the vise and we'll start bending. You can see that the bolt is bent a little bit, but it didn't really change how it works. The nuts still thread on and off the same. No problem, right? Pretty cool, huh? If you don't do anything too extreme, it'll hold up fine. And get things lined up. Let's get our wheel back on there. But now we have to pay attention to where our curve is. See how that's curved? You can see that right there. Okay, so we have our flat spots here and on this side, so on both sides of it, and then our bend is towards me. So we're gonna put this in here, get it kind of basically in here. Now it looks pretty straight. So this is our test one. I think it'll be fine. Yep, a lot straighter than it was before. I feel good about that. So now we've compensated for the angle of the frame on our tensioner. Whenever you're building anything mechanical, you're gonna run into variables. So these parts, they're made the best that we know how to go in as many applications as possible. But there's variables that you can't account for. Bike frames are different, uh, ch you know, chain links are different. There's so many variables that you have to go into it with a problem solving mindset. In this case, our chain was in line, everything was straight, but we ran into two things. Well, our tensioner wheel wasn't quite as straight as we need, but it wasn't that far off. I could have gone in and bent, you know, the bracket and done all kinds of harder work, but always start simple, okay? A simple solution was, well, I just bend the bolt. I don't have to bend it that much. It'll still function. It still has the st same strength, but I'm gonna start there as my first option. And we suggest throwing out your rear fenders, but there's a bunch of you that demand to keep them. So we need to make it safer. How do you do that? You get it out of the way. You cut out a section. So right now, as the chain stretches, cause this is a new chain, it's gonna stretch. It's gonna do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's gonna move all around because you're just trying to get everything seated to start harmoniously working together. So then it's an efficient machine that wants to work together. But we need those things out of the way as much as possible. So coming up in our test videos, I'm gonna get the rest of the bike assembled first, but we'll have test videos where then I'm gonna report back on all of these things that we've made as far as adjustments, okay? Then that tells us, do we need to take it further or not? So go watch the last video of mounting the arch chain tensioner. It really goes, you know, first hand in hand with this video. Uh, so watch that, then watch this. You'll start to see the full width of how to problem solve. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And my main goal is I want to teach you how to mechanically problem solve because of these variables. That's the main goal here. How do you mechanically problem solve so you get the performance that you want and you can take it to the next level. Uh, so thank you so much. Check out the links below, like, subscribe, jump into our Facebook group where we're all helping each other out. Take care.